in, in this kind of sport, it's for sure more dangerous than, than other sports. But I believe it's, it's, it's somehow written when and how you're going to die, in my view. And if you do things within the limits, and specifically said within your limits, not above, then I feel uh, you can do what you like. Michael Schumacher arrived in Formula One with the mental and physical ability to drive every corner of every lap flat out. Michael was the right man for the right time and, and we all had to raise our game. Michael Schumacher was an interesting character. You know, he, he was fully focused on racing. You know, he, he was the guy that really got us all into fitness and, and realized that having a, a better fitness level could help you drive a racing car and help you with that consistency from the first lap to the last lap of the race. We can all remember him jumping about on the podium when the rest would look exhausted and worn out. And he knew that if he could, if his physical side was never a consideration, then his mental side would function so much better. His sleeping patterns, his fitness. He just took the whole thing to another level. Michael in the race was the best driver I've ever seen. Able to do 75 laps with the same time like a qualifying. He was fit. He was fantastic. Well, Michael was always my uh, the master, you know, so I always wanted to be close to him, especially, I mean, I signed the contract with Ferrari as a kid, you know, and uh, Michael was like the, the god. And the whole weekend, I felt that we quite good. And I don't know why, but the, when I was in the motorhome today, I thought that I'm able to win this race, but then I was effectively, I was actually in the race, I was just in the third and fourth position, and I thought, oh, uh, I, I think uh, my dream doesn't come up. And then suddenly uh, the situation changed, I went in for dry tires, and it was absolutely at the right moment, and uh, I could win the race, and I'm really happy that I didn't win the race uh, because of accidents or uh, somebody has a... Uh, I would say uh, a problem on the car, or whatever reason, or fall out. Uh, I really won this race uh, by myself and by the team. Everybody did a fantastic job. I really have to say, like I had the car today, I wasn't actually in the in the qualifying at that good as it was in the race, and uh, it was unbelievable. And I have to say thank you to the team. Michael Schumacher. Um... I don't think Michael was too concerned about it, but he was a he was a pretty misunderstood character because he was quite an intimidating character in many ways but if you knew him personally he was quite the opposite very engaging very personal i enjoyed being michael schumacher's teammate in 92 i found him really good to work with very open uh, he, he ruined my f1 career in some respects because people didn't realize just how good he was and would would become uh, and rewriting their record books everywhere um, I was more experienced in the race, could often race better than him. He was blindingly fast. He was early into Formula 1. It was his first full season. But I really enjoyed the experience. We had some, had some fun together. I'd pick him up in my helicopter and fly him up to Silverstone on occasions. Or, and we, just, we, we were just fine. But I, I was the old man and he was, he was the new kid in town. I don't know of anyone who worked with Michael who had a bad word to say against him, who worked with him. Lots of people who raced against him had a different opinion. I saw his attack on, on the outside at braking, but then going around the corner, for me it was... I, first of all, I didn't see him, but second, outside around the corner, he usually lose ground, so I didn't really expect him to be there anymore. That, you know, I'm amazed. I actually got in front of him when we were braking a little bit. Oh, no, he didn't see me there. Well, no. But it, <laughs> no but, chance. You know, you gotta either be blind or stupid to not see me, but you know, it's racing. Jensen, with, uh, you're watching the pictures there on the TV. Can we just gain a neutral perspective on this and uh, get your. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed it. I didn't see that part. I think I was looking away at that point. You've got to hop in that car and think that you can beat anybody. And that sounds arrogant, uh, but you've got to have a little bit of arrogance, an enormous amount of confidence. 
Uh, and, you know, and that's what makes a good driver. I mean, you look at Michael Schumacher. He's mistaken a lot for being arrogant, and he's very talented, and he's got an unbelievable will to win, and, and that's what you need in Formula One to succeed. The youngest world champion to have uh, won it for the second time in a row. Oh, really? Oh, nice to know. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you were saying just now it's going to take a little while to sink in. How long do you think it's going to take? I'm not sure, but it slowly comes. <laughs> When I started my F1 career in 2000, Michael was the man. You know, it's when he started winning his championships with Ferrari. He'd always, obviously already won two with Benetton, but this was a, a very special era of, of Michael Schumacher in Formula One, Michael and Ferrari. And then he really took off. And yeah, you know, he's the man that could go to Ferrari, get the right people around him, and start winning championships. And, and he had to be very patient for a number of years. Whereas, in fact, Vettel and Alonso have not been able to do that. I'm pleased about the principal situation. The base is all right. From, there's a lot of areas potential you can build on. And I mean, we, we don't see, we don't face a situation where we two or three seconds off the pace. I predicted it's going to be about around the second, which it is right now. But I'm quite pleased uh, because I, I see, as you tend to say, the, end, uh, the light in the end of the tunnel, and it's becoming brighter and brighter. I think his greatest skill was collecting people. If when he went to Ferrari, and you know, he would say, "I want Ross Braun." If they had said. Yeah, no, no, he's too expensive, I'm not going to have him. He said, well, I'm not going to stay. He brought the best people into Ferrari that have Ferrari has ever seen. And for Michael to win five on the bounce, you know, I think, I think that was very special. And, and you need the car underneath you, but every driver, every guy that's won a world championship has been in a very good car, if not the best car. But he just kept pumping them out. And, uh, and he had a lot of competition in those years as well. Corinna? Congratulations, amazing day, what about that? I'm very happy, I'm very, very happy, so what can I say? Six times, never did it, so. What's it gonna mean to Michael, this? I don't think that he will realize it today. I think maybe in three, four days, it's better to ask this question. 1957, Juan Manuel Fangio won his fifth world championship, and now you have won your sixth. Can you just describe your emotions? Probably not appropriate, honestly, because it has been a tough year. It has been a tough uh, late stage of the season. And it has been a very tough race, honestly, probably one of my toughest. But I think what is much more to mention is the team. And I only can repeat ever so often, because again today, I mean, they have done uh, an incredible job. We never give up. We're always there, we always fight, and I think that's one of the big strengths uh, of the Ferrari team, and everybody in Ferrari is, is that way, and it's just a huge, big family, which we all be proud of uh, being a part of it. Michael has been uh, more than important for Ferrari, not only because he won many championships, not only because uh, he was uh, a Ferrari hero, but because he was always close to the team in the good moment and in the difficult moment. We win together, we lose together. I've decided together with the team that I'm uh, going to retire from, from racing. It has been an exceptional, really exceptional time. What motorsport in more than 30 years has given to me. I really loved every single moment of the good and, and the bad ones. Those ones make life so special. You know, he, he could have carried on, and I think he would have won a good chance. He would have won the championship again in 2007 because they, you know, he would have had the continuity with the team, and he would have. But yeah, you know, he was tired and and uh, decided to stop and have a rest. Michael Schumacher was 
obviously incredibly fast. You don't win seven world titles without being so, but I think he was just clever in the car. He had enough capacity to work out what was going on around him, out of the car, get all the right people and facilities, get it all pointed in his direction. You know, he lifted Benetton to a world championship. He lifted Ferrari to world championships because he was lifting teams. He was on a journey with teams into making them successful. Yeah, his legacy was he changed what a Formula One driver should be. You know, for sure, when I was a child, he was my hero and I was looking up to him and I still am, but there is the, the friendship uh, between us. Even when I was quicker than him, he was uh, not liking so much, but uh, respecting me, you know, and uh, because I was like, you are my, my teacher, you know, so, and the relationship was so great and it was a fantastic feeling to work with him, you know. Whether Lewis beats his, his um, seven titles or not, you know, I will always regard him as, as one of the greatest, if not the greatest in, uh, in, in Formula One. He's a lovely human being. I mean, the work he did away from motor racing, which he always kept quiet about, his family and so on, he was a, uh, uh, yeah, and is a lovely guy. Yeah.